don't hold your breath for today's liftoff of SpaceX's giant Starship vehicle. I mean, this is not to say that the odds are against 420, but indeed the possibility is quite slim. The team is working around the clock on many issues. Maybe 420, maybe not, Musk said via Twitter on Tuesday night, April 18th. Yeah, maybe not. SpaceX said in a statement that teams continue working towards Thursday, April 20th for the first flight test of a fully integrated Starship and Super Heavy rocket. However, SpaceX has also stressed that the Starship launch target could slip again, so don't be disappointed if Thursday comes and goes with the 120 meter vehicle still on the ground. The company isn't expecting to fully succeed either, as when a liftoff eventually occurs, it will be, after all, a test flight. If we do make an attempt tomorrow, the chances of scrubs are high, but whether a scrub or liftoff or a rapid unscheduled disassembly or some combination of all of the above, excitement is pretty much guaranteed, SpaceX's commentator said during the webcast of the launch of 21 of the company's V2 mini Starlink broadband satellites on April 19th. But I suppose it's better to be scrubbed than to have an RUD on the pad. Am I right? Musk's biggest concern was that a fireball incident could melt the launch pad if one of the engines failed. He said such an incident would melt the steel and destroy the area where the rocket took off, in which case could result in a very bad day. Uh, it would take us uh, probably several months to rebuild the launch pad if we, if we melt it. Uh, so my top hope is please... Uh, May fate smile upon us. This is a very understandable hope. SpaceX has invested heavily, likely on the order of a billion dollars to two billion, in launch infrastructure and production facilities at the Starbase site in South Texas. However, it was willing to take risks with the Starship prototypes. The full stack of Super Heavy and Starship carries substantially more propellant and an accident at the launch site would be highly destructive. Therefore, SpaceX is proceeding more cautiously toward its orbital test flight. The goal is to ensure the rocket clears the launch site so that it does not damage valuable infrastructure there at a minimum. Finally, as another sign, there were industry whispers that this date had definitely been ruled out, either by a matter of days or perhaps more, with the removal of temporary flight restrictions on the day. Technical issues already foiled the first try at a Starship space launch, which occurred on Monday, April 17. SpaceX called off that attempt with about 9 minutes left on the countdown clock, citing a pressurization problem apparently caused by a frozen valve. The coming launch attempt will also take place from Starbase, SpaceX's facility in South Texas's Gulf Coast. It will employ a first-stage vehicle called Booster 7 and an upper-stage prototype known as Ship 24, in case you didn't know already. If all goes according to plan, Booster 7 will splash down in the Gulf of Mexico about 8 minutes after launch. Ship 24 will reach space and make a partial circuit of Earth before splashing down in the Pacific Ocean near Hawaii 90 minutes after liftoff. SpaceX won't attempt to recover either Booster 7 or Ship 24 on the coming test flight, but that will change as the Starship program continues to develop. The mature architecture will be fully reusable, Musk has said, with each booster and spacecraft ideally flying multiple times per day. Indeed, the 33-engine booster known as Super Heavy will come back to Earth directly atop its launch mount, if all goes according to plan guided down to a soft touchdown by the launch tower's chopstick arms. In short, we still hope that today, 420, will go into history as a milestone marking the most powerful rocket in the world lifting off. Next up in the news, SpaceX resumed launches of upgraded second-generation Starlink internet satellites Wednesday from Cape Canaveral. Nearly two months after some spacecraft and the first batch of larger, more capable Starlink version 2 mini satellites ran into problems soon after liftoff. A Falcon 9 rocket lifted off at 10.31 a.m. EDT from Pad 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station with 21 upgraded second-generation Starlink satellites inside its nose cone. SpaceX bypassed a launch opportunity earlier Wednesday morning due to concerns about cloud cover over the spaceport. This mission, known as Starlink 6-2, continued launching SpaceX's new Starlink V2 mini satellite platform, fitted with improved phased array antennas with four times the communications capacity of earlier generations of Starlink satellites, known as version 1.5, to beam internet signals to consumers around the world. 
Despite their name, the Starlink version 2 mini satellites are much more massive and more than four times larger than the older Starlink version 1.5 satellites. The mini moniker refers to SpaceX's plans to launch an even larger, fully sized Starlink version 2 satellite design on the company's huge new Starship rocket. The Starship has nearly 10 times the payload lift capability of a Falcon 9 rocket with greater volume for satellites as well. The first group of 21 Starlink version 2 mini satellites launched on February 27th on a Falcon 9 rocket, but most of those spacecraft have not started maneuvering into SpaceX's operational fleet. SpaceX's founder and CEO Elon Musk tweeted that the first group of Starlink version 2 mini satellites was experiencing some issues as expected. Musk said some of the upgraded Starlink version 2 mini satellites on the February 27th launch could be deorbited without ever entering service. As of Wednesday, two of the first 21 Starlink version 2 mini satellites have been deorbited to re-enter the atmosphere and burn up, according to a tabulation by Jonathan McDowell, an astrophysicist and expert tracker of spaceflight activity. Three of the Starlink version 2 mini satellites appear to be ascending toward an operational altitude and another 16 remain in a lower orbit, presumably still undergoing tests and checkouts. While SpaceX worked out problems with the first batch of Starlink version 2 mini satellites, the company reverted to launching more batches of older design Starlink version 1.5 satellites on Falcon 9 rockets in March. Now, SpaceX has resumed launching Starlink version 2 minis. In addition to improved communications capability, the Starlink version 2 mini satellites have more efficient, higher thrust argon fueled propulsion systems. Argon is cheaper than the Krypton gas SpaceX used to fuel ion engines on the older generation Starlink version 1.5 satellites. This means Starlink can provide more bandwidth with increased reliability and connect millions of more people around the world with high speed internet, SpaceX said before the first launch of Starlink version 2 mini satellites in February. Each Starlink version 2 mini satellite weighs about 800 kilograms at launch, nearly three times heavier than the older Starlink satellites. They are also bigger in size, with a spacecraft body more than 4.1 meters wide, filling more of the Falcon 9 rocket's payload fairing during launch, according to regulatory filings with the Federal Communications Commission. The enhancements give the Starlink version 2 mini satellites a total surface area of 1,248 square feet or 116 square meters, more than four times that of a Starlink version 1.5 satellite. The FCC granted SpaceX approval on December 1st to launch up to 7,500 of its planned 29,988 spacecraft Starlink Gen 2 constellation, which will spread out into slightly different orbits than the original Starlink fleet. The regulatory agency deferred a decision on the remaining satellites SpaceX proposed for Gen 2. The FCC previously authorized SpaceX to launch and operate roughly 4,400 first-generation KA band and KU band Starlink spacecraft that SpaceX has been launching since 2019. With the launch on Wednesday, SpaceX has sent 372 Starlink Gen 2 satellites into orbit and deployed 4,238 Starlink satellites in all, including test units no longer in service. More than 3,900 Starlink satellites are currently in orbit. And that's about all the information we have for you today. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and we'll see you next time.